In this tutorial for Pulp, I'm going to show you how to make directional player sprites, the short melee attack, a simple enemy pathfinding AI, as well as the ability to lock a room until all enemies are defeated. If you haven't watched my video about making an adventure game using Pulp, I highly recommend watching it first, since I use some concepts from the video in this one. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. Player facings are pretty simple. First, you want to create four different player tiles that correspond to different facings. Then, in the player script, we can respond to the update event and check event.dx and event.dy. These two variables hold what direction you last attempted to move. We can write some conditionals to capture the different cases. If event.dx is 1, that means we move to the right, so we can swap with the right facing player tile. If event.dx is negative 1, that means we move to the left, so we swap with the left facing tile. Then, we can continue with the down and up cases. And if we run this in game, we can see that the player facings already work. We can start off by making four different swords for the four different directions you can swing the sword. I made them as items, but it doesn't really matter what they are. Then, in the player script, we can respond to the confirm event, which is called whenever you press the A button. Inside the event handler, we first have to figure out where to place the sword and which direction sword to use. We can figure out where to place the sword by gaining the current position of the player, and then offsetting by the last direction the player moved. Sword X and Sword Y now contain the coordinates of the tile right in front of whatever direction the player is currently facing. We can then determine which sword tile to use by leveraging the same strategy for the player facings, like so, but this time first storing it into a variable. Now we can tell the tile at Sword X and Sword Y to swap to the tile, and then after that, we can use a handy function called wait to wait a certain amount of time, let's just say 0.2 seconds, and then swap back to white. If we run it, we can see that it swings the sword right in front of you when you press A, but we run into a couple problems. The first is that if you swing at an existing tile, it gets overwritten. The second problem is that you can swing the sword and then immediately move away from it. The second one isn't a big problem, but it's just a bit weird that you'll be able to do that. We can fix the first problem by first checking if the tile that we're placing the sword at already has something there. We can do that by using the name function to get the name of the tile at the sword position, and then checking if it's empty or equal to white. Then we can swap the tiles around. However, we also want to be able to swing at an enemy. So here I'm going to check if the tile name is enemy, which is what I'll name the enemy sprite in the next section. We could copy the same swap code into the code block as well, but to prevent code duplication, we can do this. Let's create an event handler called swing sword and put the code in there. And then in the conditionals, we can just call swing sword. We can fix the second problem by using two special functions ignore and listen. We can put ignore at the top, which essentially stops the game from accepting user input, so the player can't move while the sword is being swung. Then, after the wait is over, we can put listen, which restores the user input. Now, if we try it out in game, we can see that if we swing at a wall, it doesn't do anything, and we also can't move while the sword is swinging. Let's first create an enemy sprite called enemy. You can make this an item if you want the player to be able to move past enemies. Then, in the script for the sprite, let's respond to an event that we'll create called enemy move update. In the game script, we can copy what I did in the adventure game tutorial to make a timer which will control how fast the enemy will move. I set the interval as 10 so that the enemy will move every half second. Back in the enemy script, let's figure out where we want to move the enemy. The plan is to have a symbol AI that makes the enemy move directly towards the player. Let's first get the position of the enemy. We can then compare the x-coordinate of the enemy with the player x-coordinate. If the player x is less than the enemy x, the player must be on the left of the enemy, so we can decrement the enemy position. If it's greater, we can increment. Notice that if they're equal, we don't change the x-position. Next, let's check if the space we're moving into is a valid space. We can do that by, again, using the name function and checking if the tile is an empty space. If not, let's just reset the x-position. We can then do the same thing, but along the y-axis. After that, we can just swap the current tile with an empty tile, and tell the new enemy position to swap to the enemy tile. It seems pretty simple, but the emergent behavior is quite powerful. We can place any number of enemy sprites in the game, along with some obstacles, and you'll notice that they can follow you around as well as work their way around small obstacles. They also don't overlap each other, as they will check before occupying the space of another enemy. Currently, they don't damage the player, so let's fix that. 
Let's first add the health system for my adventure game tutorial. So that's the load event, the damage player event, and the draw event. Make sure to recreate the heart sprites as well. Then, in the enemy script, we can check at the end if the new enemy position is equal to the player position. If so, we can set a damage amount and call the damage player event on the player. You can see now when the enemy overlaps the player, the player gets damaged. We can add a system to lock the room when the enemies are still alive and unlock when all the enemies are defeated. Let's first create a gate sprite and in the script, respond to an event we'll create later called enemies defeated and swap with white. We can then keep track of the enemies remaining in a room in the game script by responding to the enter event and setting enemies remaining to zero. This essentially resets the enemy counter whenever you enter a new room. In the enemy script, we can also respond to the enter event and increment the enemies remaining by one. This makes it so the game will automatically count up how many enemies there are in a room whenever you enter it. Lastly, we can go to the player script and when we check if we're attacking an enemy, we can decrement the enemies remaining. Then we can check if the enemies remaining are less than or equal to zero. And if so, we can admit an enemies defeated, which brings us back full circle. In game, you can see that once we walk into a new room, the gates are all locked. But once I defeat the last enemy, the gates unlock. You can add in some sound effects and at this point, we're pretty much done. I've left the project file in the description. If you thought this video was helpful and want to see more Playdate content, consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. I have tons of Playdate related videos planned for the future. If you want to see sneak peeks of my videos before they come out or interact with me in any way, you can follow my Twitter or join my Discord, which is linked in the description. See you next time.